Hello and welcome to North Country Matters. My name is Donna Seymour. I am a member of the League of Women Voters of St. Lawrence County, one of the civic partners for this show. Today we're talking with Ray Babowitz, the Director of Communications, Government Relations, and Marketing for the Community Health Centers of the North Country. Ray, welcome to North Country Matters. We're delighted to have you with us to talk about the important work the Community Health Centers uh, are doing in the North Country, New York State, and across the country. Well, Donna, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to come in and, and tell the story of, uh, of community health centers here at the local level and, you know, across the nation as a whole. Right. You know, I think I first uh, started really hearing a lot about it a few months ago when um, the federal government started making more money available to the community health centers. All of a sudden, you guys were in the news a lot. Before that, you seemed to kind of be flying under the radar screen. You know, it's it's an interesting uh, statement and very true. Um, and I felt the same way when I joined our team almost 10 years ago now. The, the health centers in this country have actually been around for over 50 years. They were actually born out of President Johnson's original war on poverty, uh, which obviously goes back, you know, many, many, many years. And, and that's where the whole concept of community health centers began, to make sure that everybody in communities across America would have equitable access to health care. And I would think that, you know, anybody watching us today would not disagree with the statement that everybody deserves access to, to health care. It's obviously good for our communities from whatever vantage point you want to look at it from. Well, you know, one of the things, of course, President Johnson also started the war on poverty. That was when social uh, or when Medicaid got started. We saw a lot of real initiatives that that came and, and tried to help the people at the lowest levels of our economic ladder. So those are all important things. And I think having gone through the COVID crisis, we really understand the role of public health and how important it is that everyone have access to it. So clearly the community health centers are an important part of that network. So talk to us a little bit about uh, how many centers there are in New York State and how many people you serve. Well, just in New York State, and this usually raises eyebrows um, uh, all by itself, uh, one in nine people, <clears throat> excuse me, one in nine people um, in the state of New York now receive their care at a community health center. Uh, you know, that works out to, to many millions of people uh, here in New York State, probably just over three million people. But that's one in nine that receive their care at a community health center here in, in New York State. If you look at it nationwide, it's just over 30 million people now that receive their care. And how many how many health centers are there actually here in the state? There's approximately 800 here in New York State. Okay, and so they're spread out uh, in urban areas, rural areas, suburban areas. You really serve the entire state through your network, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we obviously are our own independent you know, organization here in the North Country that, that operates, you know, on our own, but we're part of a larger network of these 800 health centers across New York State, which, yes, serve very mission critical uh, needs in urban areas of the state to the most rural areas of the state. In fact, arguably, you know, frontier areas, you know, down in the Adirondack Park. Sure, sure. So um, who do the health centers serve and what services are offered by the health centers? Well, you know, here specifically with, with our health centers, because it varies widely, you know, depending on, on where you're at and which health center you're speaking to. But here in the North Country, uh, we operate the, the health centers uh, in Governor, in Canton, in Ogdensburg and also in Malone over in Franklin County. We also operate an optometry uh, center here in Watertown that also offers optical services. But our federally qualified health centers are the Governor, Canton, Ogdenburg, and Malone locations. Uh, services uh, vary a little bit depending on the location you go to, but generally you have access to primary care, pediatric care, uh, dental services, um, optometry, and again, optical services are available. Uh, care coordination, uh, substance use uh, services, which uh, we all obviously wish we didn't need, but are a vital 
uh, piece of the care uh, continuum today. Uh, outreach and enrollment services for those who need help with health insurance. Uh, there's still a lot of people out there that, believe it or not, do not have health insurance. And it's, it's tough to navigate that health insurance world for all of us. So it's nice to have somebody on our team that can handle those services. We offer the Community Friendship Volunteer Program, which is all about building more age-friendly communities for obviously our older residents. Too many people are, are ending up in long-term care in nursing homes, Donna, that just don't need to be there clinically. They end up there because they're isolated. Their family and, and friends you know, move away, uh, pass on, and they just go there because they don't have a choice. Well, they do have a choice and they should be able to remain in their own homes for as long as possible. So we offer that service too. Uh, anybody can, can access our services. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. Yes, by mission, we're meant to be a safety net, uh, but whether you make a dollar a year or a million dollars a year, our services are available to you and your family. In fact, you could walk through the door completely uninsured without a $5 bill in your wallet or your purse, and you're going to be seen. That's the mission critical you know, sector that community health centers across this nation, including us, uh, play. Now there's many health centers here in New York State, including our own that also provide a lot of healthcare services to the population that uh, has intellectual and developmental disabilities. So it may be a small percentage of our patient panel here in the North Country, but a very important piece of the services of the population that you know we provide. Again, it's equitable care. Um, it, it shouldn't matter what your situation is in, in your personal life or what your disabilities might be. You should have access to quality care, and, and that's what we offer to the entire spectrum. Well, as you well know, in rural New York, which the North Country certainly qualifies as, there are a lot of barriers uh, to care for people. Lack of insurance is one of them, but also uh, just the overall cost of care, the lack of insurance, uh, the distance, the transportation issues, things like that. So the fact that you are located where you're located is really important because getting to your services is one of the barriers that folks have to face, isn't it? It is. And it's interesting you bring that up because I think uh, probably just before, but certainly during the, the COVID pandemic and here in the, the waning back end of the, of the pandemic, uh, what now has become coined the social determinants of health have become a buzzword, the social care aspect the the caring for the whole you know body mind and physical etc certainly do not disagree with that at all it's it's absolutely 100 percent true it's what's interesting though is that model of care is what community health centers have been delivering for their entire history and that whole social care aspect is is vital and you know I've argued for, for many years that transportation is the biggest piece of social care because it's not just about accessing your doctor, you know, your dentist, your optometrist, whatever it might be, your behavioral health specialist. It's about you accessing better education, which leads to a better job, which leads to better opportunities at, at safe and affordable housing and, and proper food security, et cetera. You know, all that stuff exists, but without that transportation piece, it, it doesn't do anybody any good. So we're very fortunate in St. Lawrence County anyway to have a fairly robust public transportation system. Does it run on a schedule like it runs in Manhattan? No, of course not. But you can pretty much get to wherever you need to get to in St. Lawrence County now via public transportation. And we are very fortunate that all our health centers, at least the, the, the three in, in St. Lawrence County, Governor Canton and, and Ogdensburg, they're all located on the public transportation you know, system. So you know, make your appointment with the provider and then get in touch with public transportation and they will tell you which route and, and which time is the best one to take you know, to access that appointment with your health care provider and then get you back home. 
You know, that's that's a good point, because I think a lot of folks still don't understand just how flexible the public bus system is. In Potsdam, where I live, of course, they go by my house every day because we've got the shuttle service between the campuses and also the buses that serve outside outlying areas. But really, those those buses are easy to get on, easy to get off, and they're not expensive. So they're a great tool for folks who don't happen to have their own car. Well, they are. And one uh, one uh, thing I should throw in there is in addition to that, because, you know, this often comes up in conversation. Well, I don't have any way to get to the bus stop. It's OK. We're, we're again fortunate in St. Lawrence County that a service called First Mile, Last Mile is available. And forget the name. It's it's a, it's a misnomer. It doesn't have to be just one mile on either end. If you don't have a way to get to the bus stop, Again, call public transportation and they will get you set up with a first mile, last mile ride at no charge. They will come to your home, pick you up, get you to the closest bus stop. And then, of course, pick you up. They're not going to abandon you there when you get back and they'll get you back home. And actually, there's no income you know, limits on that either. Uh, anybody can utilize that first mile, last mile program. And, you know, once you get into the bus system, yes, you got to pay for that bus ride, but you can, you know, access that bus stop via that program. So there's there's a lot of, you know, positive movement in taking care of that one, you know, big piece of the social care, the social determinants of care, you know, pie, let's call it. I want to go back for a second to something that you mentioned a little earlier about folks who who may not have health insurance. Certainly one of the things we saw during COVID was a lot of people who lost their jobs, their health care may have actually come through their employment, or they may be folks who are like, say, in their mid-50s. They're not old enough for Social Security. They're not often old enough for Medicare, but they really still need health care. So your operation at the health centers really fills that gap, doesn't it, for people who may be between jobs or at the end of their working career, but not old enough to access Medicare. Well, it certainly uh, is a mission critical void that, yes, we do fill and, and health centers across this state and this country, you know, fill. Uh, again, you're going to be seen regardless of what that health insurance status, you know, is. You should never have to worry about that. Just pick up the phone and and call one of our health centers that are most convenient to you and you will get in, you know, to be seen. And, you know, a, a lot of our programs, I, I mentioned like the Community Friendship Volunteer Program, for example, you know, to help out the older residents stay independent. The, I think the piece of magic, if I can use that word with that program, is this. It fills that void you just brought up. There's a lot of people out there that, yes, they, they their income and assets are low enough for them to qualify for a lot of the help that is available through through Medicaid. And then down the other end of the spectrum, you've got, you know, the more well-to-do, the wealthier people that can afford their own in-home care. Well, there's the majority of us in the middle that we have too much to qualify for X, but we don't have enough to pull it off on our own with our own personal care. Let's call that Y. We fill that void and that program, the Community Friendship Volunteer Program, for example, that's what the hyper-focus is on to make sure nobody falls through those cracks. And I think you can use that as an example, uh, as a description of what the overall health centers across this country do. They fill those gaps so nobody falls through them. We can't force people to go. So yes, yeah, some people still do, but it's not because they don't have an option. No, and part, of course, part of the problem is knowing those options exist, and we hope that's where, uh, uh, you know, a program like North Country Matters can help people understand that uh, I like to say the North Country is rich in services, but poor in information when it comes to accessing those services. So so this is a great uh, tool for that. So speaking of your services at the health centers, Ray, uh, how do people access them? What is, you know, how do you get in touch with the health centers? Well, as with most things today, there's any number of ways. Um, you know, you can certainly do it what many people now call, you know, the old school way and you know, just pick up the phone and call and have a conversation with somebody. Um, you can obviously find us online uh, as well. Again, just, you know, do a search for Community Health Center of the North Country 
and it'll go right to our, our website, chcnorthcountry.org. Um, obviously, we're all over the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, you know, uh, YouTube, we have our own YouTube channel. Uh, LinkedIn. I mean, there's there's any number of ways to to reach out and and get to us. But ultimately, once you do, you know, again, find the location that's most convenient for you, whether that be our our uh, Canton governor, uh, I could spur, or for anybody, uh, you know, you could maybe it's more convenient for you to go to our Malone location. That's perfectly fine. You know, just call and and make the appointment. You know, as a federally qualified health center. We we do obviously accept same day appointments. We accept walk ins. Obviously, appointments are appreciated, and it's going to be the most efficient way to access services. But it's it's not absolutely necessary. But call and 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 you will be scheduled as soon as possible to to come in for your care. I would think too. One of your more critical services is your pediatric care because that's a a place that a lot of people find find it hard to find a doctor for their very young children. So this that care must be a, an important part of your um, your centers. That's an extremely important part uh, of of the role we play. I think the the most pediatric uh, or the biggest pediatric population we see, meaning that like the really little kids. I mean, technically, pediatrics goes up to twenty one years of age. But I mean, the little kids, I think our biggest population by far is in the governor market with uh, Dr. Schusler and Megan McGowan. And yes, they they do see a lot of kids and it's it's a, a mission critical service, you know, for those communities. That leads me to, to uh, one service I, I didn't mention earlier. And again, we're, it's such an integrated model. It's even easy for us to forget some of the things we do is our dental CELA program. Mm -hmm. We offer the dental CELA program uh, to, to the kids across the school districts in St. Lawrence County. And I think we all know, you know how important um, oral health is to our overall um, health. There's a lot of chronic diseases that are linked directly back to poor dental care, not necessarily poor primary care. Uh, so to be able to get into the schools, that's a school-based program, to be able to get in there and provide these this sealant you know program for the, the little kids is a, a big advantage you know for families here in the north country and we just started to do it uh, under a pilot program within the health center in governor as well so we'll certainly see that expand um, as time goes on okay thanks so uh, let's talk a little bit about how the health centers fit into the larger healthcare system that's here in the north country where uh, where do you fit in to that uh, larger system well look at it this way we see on average about somewhere between 12 and 13,000 patients a year at just our four federally qualified healthcare locations that doesn't count all our ancillary services and our Watertown Center. If you add that all in, it's probably more like 20,000 people. And it equates out to somewhere between 45 and 50,000 visits on an annual basis because people should at least, you know, probably go to their doctor more than once a year. So you look at those numbers, you think about the individual number of patients, you think about the individual number of visits first. And remember the role we play. We're about equitable access to care. We're about keeping people out of the emergency departments. No one should be accessing primary care at an emergency department anywhere in the North Country, anywhere in America for that matter. The emergency department is there for its own specific reason, which is obvious in its name. You have the urgent cares that are in a lot of communities, including in the North Country here now. They're about urgent needs. They're not about giving you that primary care, that preventive care, that integrated care, you know, that health centers provide. And this is not downplaying the importance of hospitals or urgent cares or any other provider of health care. We all play our own important part in that continuum of care. But when you get down to it, by us being here and giving everyone access to care, again, no matter where you fall in that socioeconomic ladder, and by keeping people out of that emergency department setting, we're not only keeping people healthier, which is the right thing to do, we're saving the healthcare system a lot of money. It's 
far cheaper for you to be seen in the health center environment than in the emergency department environment. It's that simple. It's not only the right thing to do, it's the 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 economic thing that that's right for our communities. Again, not only here in the North Country, but across America. And the reimbursement models set up by the federal government were were set up, you know, purposely to make sure the health centers would be sustainable, you know, as well. Um, we actually make money off of seeing a, a Medicaid patient, whereas a lot of other healthcare providers don't. So it, it's, you know, a sustainable model that it can be held up as an example in our communities as well. Well, that's, that's good to know. And um, anything that, um, increases the access and yet is affordable is a huge part of the solution to providing across the board health care for the community, isn't it? Well, it certainly is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's again, we've been very good in this country for a long time at, at treating you after you're sick. The, the whole point to the model of care and the part we play in the continuum of care across this country is keeping you healthier to begin with. And a big part of that, um, as we have certainly learned over and over again in the last uh, three years with the COVID, is how important uh, preventative services are, how important inoculations are, uh, all that sort of thing. So those are all part and parcel of the services that you offer, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, all your your vaccinations, et cetera, are always there. Um, We have... uh a fairly robust chronic disease, you know, management program that's been building up over the last four or five years, you know, at our health centers to help you with all sorts of things. I think a lot of it obviously is diabetes related because it's such a a big issue here in the North country and across America as as a whole. But it's, it's that whole package of care, you know, think of us as, you know, as a a mall, a one-stop shop. Once you're under that umbrella, um, whether you first come to us for primary care, whether you first come to us for for dental care, whatever it might be, once you're under there, all that other stuff is available for you and your family. Again, regardless of, of where you are economically, regardless of disability, it doesn't make any difference. Once you're under that umbrella, you can access all those services. One other one I just thought of, um, you know, we'll be here forever. Uh, we offer WIC services right. across St. Lawrence and Franklin County, going back to to the little kids. You know, look, look let's face it. Uh, you want to get to the foundation uh, of a, a healthy community. One of the blocks in that foundation is obviously access to proper nutrition. And, and that's obviously what the WIC program provides. So we're very fortunate to be able to bring that to the, the, the communities across the North Country as well. You know, and you bring up a really good point about access to nutrition and and food. We know that a lot of communities in the North Country are food deserts. The uh, maybe the only place you can go to buy something in your community might be a gas station with a little grocery store attached to it, because the grocery stores per se are kind of far and few between in the larger community. So that is an important aspect, Ray. Um, you talked a minute ago about the economic impact of the health. Uh, center network. Uh, what would you say in terms of your overall financial contribution to the to the to the uh, North Country economy is? Well, just, just hyper focusing in on the North Country economy, and again, it varies year to year. But our health centers, um, which obviously meaning the the members of our team uh, and their salary and taxes and the money they spend and and obviously what we spend directly with with vendors and what have you it falls somewhere in the 10 to 15 million dollar a year range of economic impact that we have across the north country which is a considerable amount uh you know obviously if if we were to poof disappear you know tomorrow morning uh, which is not going to happen. But if it did, it would be economically noticeable. It, it's a big piece. And uh, some people might say, well, what you know, how's that work in the healthcare? What does that have to do with with healthcare? It's directly, you know, connected. Uh, you know, I always say for a community to be economically vibrant, it has to be healthy. But to be healthy, 
it has to be economically vibrant, right? It's that, you know, if we could ever figure out how to, to get through all that, you know, we'd be better off because they are completely interconnected, whether we like it or not, that they are. And we have to figure out how to bridge those gaps, you know, and make it happen. And again, I think we start by making sure there's at least equitable access. If you want access, again, we can't force anybody to go to a healthcare provider, but if you want access, it's there and it needs to be presented in an equitable fashion. And that's kind of one of the main, you know, blocks of the foundation that need to be in place for a community to be as healthy as possible. And it's a long-term procedure or, or process, I should say, but, you know, we can get there. Well, that's great. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate you coming in today and talking about this. Uh, it, You know, uh, equity of access is two parts, equal and access. And you obviously have figured out at the community health uh, center part of it, how to do that very, very well. So um, I, I hope that more folks will be able to take advantage of your services now that maybe they understand them a little bit better. So thanks again for coming in and for sharing your information with us. Well, Donna, thank you again for, for giving me the opportunity to come in and, and briefly tell the story of health centers across America and here in the North Country, because I think we opened up with, with the perfect statement. Um, it's there, There's still a very well-kept secret in many communities across America. And, you know, having opportunities like this, e even if it just brings in one or two more people to get that care, then, you know, we've won another battle in the larger war. So well, we, we'll hope for better, um, uh, better than one or two people. Let's put it that way and then hope more folks find you. <laughs> but so, even if it is just one or two, we've it's, still. It's more than you had before. Exactly. Okay. And of course, each one will, will tell someone else and it will grow organically that way as well. So thank you, Ray, for coming in. So these conversations are a production of North Country Matters which is a civic collaboration between the League of Women Voters of St. Lawrence County and the Potsdam Public Library. Until next time, remember, our North Country matters. <laughs>